A lot of you guys said that my reviews aren't that great. You guys said that it's an amateur and I should switch careers. So you know what? I think I might. Now nah, we're not gonna do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here and we're gonna review this 2021 Lamborghini Urus Pearl Capsule Edition. That's right, you guys thought I was gonna quit? We're going bigger. All right, so like usual, we're gonna start off with the front. We're gonna do a quick walk around. We're gonna go to the inside. And then the most exciting part, we are gonna go for a test drive on this car. We're gonna do a regular drive. And of course, we're gonna put it into a little bit more on the faster settings. We're gonna see zero to 60, and we're also gonna see how it handles. So starting off with the front, we're gonna have a very nice sleek design with LED headlights. This car, just to be clear, it came with an original Nardo gray paint job, and it was wrapped recently with this like baby blue Smurf blue. So up in the front, you have a very aggressive design. You're gonna have a lot of fins, a lot of very sharp chiseled corners. We're gonna have a radar here in the front as well as one in the windshield, which you can see very well. Apart from the wrap, this car does have full limo temp wrapped all the way around it. Overall, this is gonna be a very sleek, but it is gonna look like a Stingray design, but it's also gonna be a very aggressive look as well, keeping it with the traditional Lamborghini style. All right, now we're gonna be moving on to the side. So a couple main features I wanna point out here. Number one, it does come equipped with 23 inch wheels. Of course, it is gonna be a luxury car. Typically on the higher end cars, you're gonna have a bigger wheel, which means a bigger tire for more traction. Down here, we are gonna have ceramic brakes. Now, these are gonna be very, very expensive brakes, but they are gonna perform the best. It's gonna come equipped with a huge caliper for safety. So not only is this car gonna get you zero to 60 very, very fast, it's also gonna stop you very, very safely. Here, we're gonna have carbon fiber mirrors. This car is gonna have a couple carbon fiber accents. This one was not optioned out with the carbon flares, but it did come with the mirrors. We are gonna have keyless entry. We are gonna have soft closing doors, which is a very, very big plus. The side of it, it's gonna be very, very sleek and low, similar to the Tesla, but a little bit less bubbly. So like I mentioned, it's gonna stay with the Urus styling. So it's gonna be very aggressive in the front, very slow for aerodynamics. And we're gonna move on to the back here. We are gonna have these very, very stylish, sort of Stingray looking tail lights with a carbon fiber lip. We are gonna have a fully automated trunk. As you guys can see with a lot of space inside, this car does only seat five people. It's not gonna have the third row, but then again, for yours, you don't need that third row. Not a lot of people have kids in these cars. So you're gonna have more room in the back. Like I said, it's gonna be fully automated lift gate. You're gonna have a dual double exhaust, which means you're gonna have two on the left and two on the right. And then moving on to the passenger side, there's not gonna be much to talk about. It's basically gonna be the same reflection from that side to this side. The only difference is the gas cap is gonna be over here. All right, so outside was just a quick overview. I mean, it's gonna be the typical Parktronic sensors, lifted gate. You're also gonna have the Lamborghini Urus styling, all pretty much normal things. Inside though, it's gonna be a different story. So we're just gonna start off listing off one by one, seeing what we have in here. To start off, we're gonna have a couple cool features starting off in the dashboard. When you turn the car on, number one, you're gonna have speakers rise from the left and from the right for better audio. The seat itself will adjust. So when you open the door, seat goes back so that you're able to get in. And then as you start the car, it will automatically go forward into the driver setting. So looking at the dashboard, you're gonna have your typical tachometer. You're gonna have your RPMs, park, drive, neutral, your mileage, any issues that are with the car. But as you change it from different modes, which we will go over later, it will change the dashboard. So if you change it over to Corsa, for example, it will change the exhaust note and it'll also change the dashboard to a little bit more sportier looking dashboard. All right. In the center console, you are gonna have more screens instead of buttons. You are gonna have some buttons for the traction control, for the hazards, and if you wanna have the A front or the back AC defroster. The other two screens that you're gonna have will be one for your media, so it'll be your Bluetooth connectivity, your Apple CarPlay, and then the one on the bottom is gonna control your AC. So it's gonna be the AC on the car, it's also gonna be the heated and cool seats. So these screens are kinda nice because they're not fully touch screen, you're gonna have to put your finger on the screen and press it down. So it's a different feeling than just pressing the screen. Moving down to the bottom, you're gonna to have your controls for your park for your neutral your verse your drive you're also going to have the settings between corsa sport strata sabia terra and navi and if i butcher these names i'm sorry but first time in a yours which you guys don't get to drive so these will not only change the exhaust note like i mentioned it'll also change the dashboard which is going to be really nice and you guys are all going to get audio clips of that the only thing that i kind of have a problem with is the fact that if you get in this car it's not very obvious on how to drive so in the center you're going to have park 
manual mode and reverse. If you want to put it into drive, you actually have to do that on the steering wheel. You're going to have two paddle shifters, one for down, one for up shifting. And then if you press both of them, it'll go into neutral. Moving down to the bottom, you're going to have your standard suspension, steering wheel. You're going to have drivability, whether you want it to be stiffer, whether you want to be softer, whether you're going to be on the track or whether you're going to be driving it every day. On the bottom, you're going to have your auto start and stop. And what that means is when you're at a light, the car will stop automatically to save on gas. For a lot of us, we hate that feature. It would give you the option to turn it off. It'll also have your emergency parking brake. And if you want to turn off or on any sensors, if you're going reverse and if you're going to be hitting someone. Last little buttons that we're going to talk about is going to be here on the top. So a couple options you have up here is going to be for the dome light. It's going to have two of them, one for the front and one for the back. The other button you're going to have is to control the cloth for the sunroof, which will remove it. The second button will actually control the sunroof itself. You're able to pull it all the way back, forward, and slightly upwards. You're also going to have an SOS button, which is going to be very important. So in case you get into a car crash and you cannot get your cell phone, you just press this button and it'll automatically call, be able to get assistance. Over here on the left, you're going to have your traditional windows up, down, left, and right. One cool feature about this car is for the rear windows themselves, you are going to have two options. So when you press up the first time, the window will roll up. When you press it up again, you're actually going to have this mesh net that goes up, which is going to be typically for when you have kids or when you want to block out additional sunlight. All right, moving on to the back, and this is going to be a very, very important thing. So like usual, I have set the front seat to be about where I am. Once again, being 6'1", that's about the length and the space that I take from the steering wheel. And you do have a lot of space, surprisingly enough. Usually when I have, you know, the Audi TTs, the Camaros, the Mustangs, the Shelbys, all these cars, they always, always don't have space in the back seat, but roomy enough, you do. Couple cool features about this car. Still comes with a lot of carbon fiber accents, both in the front, the middle, and here in the back. This seat itself actually has adjustability, just like the front. So it does have the rear captain chairs, and that's a very, very nice feature. So you're able to put it up, down, forward and back you're over here you're also going to be able to control all your ac so whether you want the back to be a little bit heater a little bit cooler and it does also have heated seats which is a very very nice feature here in the center you're not only going to be able to have the same setting in the front so you're going to have a storage place you're also going to have a place to put your drink to put your cell phone here in the back you are going to have this little latch that opens up will be accessible to the trunk like i mentioned in this car you will have two settings so you're going to have your typical glass and then when you press it up again, you are going to have this net that comes up that will block out a lot more sun. This interior itself is going to have a beautiful blue that will contrast the outside gray. Your headliner will not be a typical cloth material. It'll be this very, very nice leather looking material following the whole theme of the car. Everything in this car is all based about luxury and being very high end. Now comes my favorite part of this whole review, the test drive. So one thing I want to show you guys really quickly as we exit this parking structure is I want to see if the camera can capture the backfires once you have it in Corsa mode. Just so you guys know, that's from the factory. That's what Lamborghini does to their cars. The really nice thing about this is if we switch it over to strata mode, which is going to be, you know, the daily driving mode, it will still backfire, but not as loud. So starting our test drive, we're going to go ahead and go easy on the car, see how it feels. Now this car does have adjustability in the suspension. So what I do expect from this is to be a very smooth ride, a little bit on the quieter side, making sure that I can drive this car every day. So. It's very smooth between shifts, not too aggressive, relatively quiet. You don't have a lot of the backfiring. You don't have a lot of the loud exhaust, which is really nice because when you pull into your neighborhood, you don't want all of your neighbors to be angry with you, whether it's early in the morning or late at night. Here, we're going to do a little pull again in strata mode, keeping it in its base mode. And even in that mode, it still has a lot of pickup and go. It, there was a little bit of a lag. I don't know if that was because it was in lower gear and there was a turbo delay, but it still did get a lot of get up and go, just not a lot of exhaust note. Right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and change it over to Corsa, and we're gonna do a zero to 60, and we're gonna go ahead and see how that sounds and how fast we can get it up there. All right, here we're gonna do a zero to 60. All right, so that was a little bit above 60. So first thing I noticed was if 
whether I launched it right or not, there was a little bit of a delay there in first gear. Second thing is those shifts are very, very aggressive. They're not as smooth as I thought they would be. So in other cars like that I've driven M5s, M3s, Audi R8s, even at a thousand horsepower, they're usually very, very smooth and they sh usually shift very quick. On this car, there is a little bit of a jerk. So especially trying to hold the camera and do one of those launches at full speed, full throttle, it's very, very aggressive. All right, guys, final thoughts about this 2021 Lamborghini Urus. Overall, I think it's a spectacular car. I think it has a lot of great features from the seats, captain chairs in the back, the fact that you can adjust the rear chairs, the fact that the rear chairs have heated seats, the overall styling, everything about it is great. Now, do I think it's worth the $250,000 plus price tag? Personally, I don't, but that's just gonna be my opinion. Even though it is a Lamborghini, even though it's a Urus, you're paying for the name, you're paying for the premium, you're paying for that status of lifestyle. I think that there's a lot of other features that are in other cars that would make this car better. For example, the hard shifting, I'm not too fond of that. I don't know if that's something to do with that mode or if that's just gonna be an issue with this car specifically, but I don't think that's gonna be very well for a car that's meant to go fast. Even though it is an SUV, it's still a Lamborghini. The other things I do love about this car, like I said, is the styling from the front, to the back, the fact that it does come with 23 inch wheels, the fact that it has amazing brakes, all of this is gonna be great. So overall, love the car. I love the original color and I do love this beautiful wrap on it. I don't think if I had the money, I would spend it on a Urus, but once again, this is gonna be my opinion. If you guys don't like this review, don't worry about it. There's gonna be another bad review coming on the next video, whether it's a Kia, a Corolla, or whether it's gonna be an Audi. As always, if you guys are interested in this car specifically, it will be for sale as of today. If you guys want any information, you guys can go onto our website, give us a call, send us a text. We'll get you guys all the information that you need. And as always, this car will be available today at Prime Sales.